Steve McQueen was one of the greatest leading men in the history of American cinema. His life was short-lived as he died at age 50. Sadly, Steve received a fatal diagnosis before his death, which not too many people know about. Join Facts First to learn how Steve McQueen received a fatal diagnosis before his death. Terrence Stephen McQueen was born in March of 1930 in Beech Grove, Indiana. He was raised by a single mother as his father left the family before Steve was born. Naturally, this was difficult for his mother, and she eventually became an alcoholic. As a young child, he felt he wasn't getting much love from his mom. He also struggled in school and ran around with local street gangs, getting involved in petty crime. Eventually, Steve's mother abandoned him and left him with her own parents, who took care of him for the remainder of his childhood. He grew up on a small farm in Slater, Missouri, and later recalled he had a loving upbringing from his grandparents and from his grandmother's sister's family. His life improved due to their love, and he was now a more focused young man. He eventually joined the Marines, and this instilled a sense of discipline in him and gave him a greater purpose in life. He was honorably discharged from the military when he was 20, and he always fondly remembered his time there. He recalled the military helped make him a man and helped prepare him for his future as a film star. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Steve McQueen's career. Steve McQueen began studying actor at Sanford Meisner's Neighborhood Playhouse. His teacher was Uta Hagen, one of the most notable theater practitioners and teachers of her time. He began his career playing small roles and bit parts on popular stage productions, both on and off Broadway. Eventually, his manager, the eminent Hilly Elkins, realized the best place for Steve to become a well-known actor was through B-movies. He was into cars and bikes and loved racing. He was handsome and had a great on-screen charisma. And so far, while work was steady, he wasn't getting roles that gave him a big break. His earliest roles were bit parts in TV shows such as Studio One, The Big Story, Climax, and Trackdown. His big break came in the science fiction horror film The Blob, which was his first leading role. He followed that up with the St. Louis bank robbery and Never So Few. His next major role was in The Magnificent Seven, where he had to hold his own among many other stars. It's still remembered as one of his best roles. It was around this time that he was also starring in the TV series Wanted, Dead or Alive. This series made him a star and got him more attention and helped bring him more offers. Throughout the 1960s, he continued to land one great role after the next. His notable films were The Honeymoon Machine, Hell is for Heroes, The Great Escape, Baby the Rain Must Fall, The Cincinnati Kid, and Nevada Smith. With each role, he gained more and more fame, and he rapidly established himself as one of the best actors of his generation. In the late 60s, he gave us two of the best roles of his lifetime. The first was as Thomas Crown in The Thomas Crown Affair. He played the charming Thomas Crown, who pulled off a major heist while being tracked down by a sexy investigator. This remains one of his most famous films, and endless debates continue on whether Steve McQueen was the better Thomas Crown or whether the Pierce Brosnan remake was better. His other great role of the late 60s was the film Bullet. He played the eponymous character, who was a San Francisco cop, looking to track down the killer who murdered his witness. This was one of the early examples of seeing a ruthless cop on screen, and Steve McQueen paved the way for several similar films in the future. The film solidified Steve as the bad boy of his generation, and it's still an iconic film today. He was on top of his game, and the 70s was a further extension of his success in the 60s. We saw him in great films, such as Le Mans, The Getaway, The Towering Inferno, and An Enemy of the People. His final two films were released in 1980, Tom Horn and The Hunter. While Steve McQueen left us a significant body of work, we could have seen so much more. Sadly, 1980 was the year that Steve McQueen passed away. Even over 40 years since his passing, Steve is remembered as one of the best actors of his generation and an icon for leading men. So how did he die so young, at the age of only 50? Steve McQueen received this fatal diagnosis before his death. Steve McQueen was sadly infected with a horrific form of cancer known as mesothelioma. He was told it would make his life harder and that it could take his life sooner than expected. During his military experience, he was exposed to asbestos as a result of working at harbors and at shipyards. This later caused him serious health issues. It's this asbestos exposure that has caused many veterans to get mesothelioma. In fact, this particular form of cancer has been rather common among veterans. 
Steve McQueen got even more exposure to asbestos while working on his films. Many times he had to wear clothing that protected against flames, and these would garner asbestos. In 1978, two years before he died, Steve began having serious issues with his health. He would cough often and have difficulty breathing at times. He was told by doctors that his mesothelioma wasn't curable, but they tried to reduce its harm via chemotherapy. He also sought alternative treatment to help him treat his illness. While this helped prolong his life a little and also helped him have enough energy to work on more films, it was sadly clear that mesothelioma was taking over his life. Steve McQueen's Life and Legacy Steve McQueen died November 7, 1980, in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, at age 50. His cause of death was a heart attack. No doubt the stress that led to his heart attack was due to his illness. His death naturally came as a shock to the film industry and to his fans. He kept his illness a secret for much of his later life. His career was short-lived, but he still managed to make an impact, especially throughout the 60s and 70s. Apart from his incredible acting ability, Steve McQueen often drove the motorcycles and cars for his films. He loved racing in real life and wasn't afraid to perform his own stunts. And while we've gotten used to many actors performing at least some of their stunts today, this was rather rare for Steve McQueen's time. He was also interested in flying planes. He was an energetic personality and wasn't afraid to take risks both in his professional and personal life. He was eventually inducted into the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. He had a huge collection of automobiles and motorcycles, with over a hundred in his collection. He briefly dated actress Gia Scala while the two were students at Stella Adler's acting school. He later married actress Nellie Adams, with whom he had two children, his daughter Terry and son Chad. The two divorced in 1972. The same year, he married actress Allie McGraw, who left her husband, producer Robert Evans, to be with McQueen. The two were married until they divorced in 1978. His final marriage was to Barbara Minty, whom he married in 1980, several months before his death. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Steve McQueen movie? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.